all right the one that i have for you is lifting up your hands sometimes you are supposed to lift up your hands because lifting up your hands is a sign of surrender it means that you can do nothing without god when you go out to war when you go out to wage war against your adversary sometimes you only need to stand because you are already a victor you have already defeated your enemies but a lot of peoples go to war and they instead of uh, 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 worshiping God, they try to fight the war in the flesh. And the scripture says, a carnal mind is enmity with God. So it is very important that when you go to war, that you do not depend on your own strength, that you do not depend on your own knowledge, that you do not lean on your own understanding and wisdom. Listen, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. If you want to pull those strongholds, some of you have generational strongholds in your life. You have things that have been coming in your life. It's like from one generation, from one family to another family. It is the same thing that has been there. You need to reach at a point and moment where you lift up your hands to God, where you worship God. Worship comes from a Greek word, proskuneo, which means in reverence of, to bow down. You can worship God in many ways. Worship does not necessarily mean in a song. You can worship God in your giving. You can worship God where you are stuck in traffic. It is time to know that God is with you and worship him just the way you are. Look at the walls of Jericho. They were not brought down in one day. They were not brought down in a very uh, thing that people would expect to. It was just worship as they kept on rotating the walls of Jericho. These men were in the spirit of the Lord. They were moved by the spirit of the Lord. They did not allow their feelings. They did not allow their knowledge about their understanding of the enemy to fool them. They were obedient to the voice of God. And they brought down the strongholds. The strongholds in your life will live. That which had been uh, there for a long time is about to go. Now, the scripture that I read to you is in the book of Exodus 17, 8 to 13. Exodus 17, 8 to 13. And it reads, The Amalekites came and attacked Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hugh went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hugh had his, held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands were made steadily till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Now the scripture talks, talks about the battle that Moses and the Israelites had against the Amalekites. These people were fighting a battle, a serious battle. And the scripture says, that Joshua 
went out to fight while Moses and Aaron went on a hill. And the scripture says, as long as Moses held his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When you are in a prayer room, in your closet, keep your hands to the Lord. I'm not saying physically holding up your hands because a lot of people may, may be having a picture where you are holding, you're putting your hands up in the sky physically. No, you can do that or you can do it while praying. What I'm trying to talk, talk about is prayer because these are Israelites, though they were having a physical war, it was spiritual. Moses understood this. He knew exactly that the war is not physical, but the war is spiritual. So he held up his arms, his hands in the air as a sign of surrender to God. And the scripture says, as long as his hands were up in the, air, in the sky, the Israelites prevailed. They were winning. But when his hands were lowered, the Americans started dis- defeating them. So what these people knew, they realized now the war is spiritual. They held Moses' hands so that Moses' hands were to the sky until sunset, until they defeated the Amalekites. Do not go out of your prayer closet until you have defeated your enemies. Yes, it may seem as though it's wearing. It may seem as though it's tiresome. It may seem as though uh, you are not seeing results. My, my brothers, there is something that is happening in the spiritual realm. You may not feel it. You may not recognize it. But something is taking place, brothers and sisters. Your prayers are not wasted. Your words will not fall to the ground. Just like Samuel, the scripture says, none of his words fell to the ground. You are going to win, brothers and sisters. Keep on praying. Scripture says, men ought to pray and not faith. There is a reason as to why Jesus made that statement. Because prayer is the key to defeating your enemies. A lot of people want to defeat their enemies. But they do not spend time in the presence of the Lord. The more time you spend with God, the more you will have victory over your enemies. The more time Moses spent in the presence of the Lord, the more time, the more they defeated their enemies. Spend time with God, brothers and sisters. Forget about what happened in the past. Forget about what did not work out and think about what is about to work out and think about what God has prepared for you. 